Hello, I'm Kevin Zettel, a technical marketing engineer at Infoblox, and today we're here to talk about Infoblox's new integration with ServiceNow. First, I'll go over an overview of ServiceNow integration and what it provides. Then I'll show you some use cases for the integration. Then I'll show you how to set everything up and then show you a working example. Finally, I'll show you where you can find additional information that you might want. Now let's start with an overview. With Outbound API, we're now able to respond faster to network changes with the help of Infoblox ecosystem license. Using ServiceNow, admin can now view devices and incidents that are discovered by Infoblox. And in turn, this provides more visibility into new devices and infected hosts in a single place, and ability to quickly respond to network events. Currently, there are many devices that join and leave the network on a regular basis, and companies are investing into tools designed to address this issue and to address different security threats. However, there is a lack of easy access to network changes, and DS security is a gap that many security tools don't secure, even when more than 90% of malware uses DNS to carry out its campaigns. The benefit of this integration is to help with these problems by providing visibility into network changes and DNS threats, with active identification of network and security issues to provide quick and necessary responses. Let's look at the first use case. Here, a client sends a DNS request through the Infoblox grid. Next, the DNS request is blocked by Infoblox. Infoblox ecosystem templates are then triggered, sending information about the security event to ServiceNow. Finally, using ServiceNow, you can see the security event that just occurred with relevant information on the incident report. Now let's see that in action. Here, I'm making a simple dig request to example.com. And here you can see that an NX domain was handed out by an Infoblox appliance with information in the additional section of the return field. Then if we go to Infoblox's side, we can see that an extensible attributes were updated for the IP of the host who made the bad request. And in this case, we can see that an incident number was updated. Then on ServiceNow side, we can look up the incident number and see that the incident was created along with information on what happened on the security event. Now let's take a look at the second use case. Here, we're integrating with ServiceNow CMDB, and in this case, we're able to pass information about the devices, networks, and IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. Here, the Infoblox Network Insight found information about the endpoint. Take note that you don't actually need Network Insight for the integration, but rather, Network Insight provides additional information that you might want to see. Next, an administrator decides to create an asset for the endpoint on the Infoblox grid. This causes ecosystem templates to be triggered, sending information to ServiceNow with information about the asset. Now let's see the integration in action. Here, I'm going to be creating a host on the device that was discovered by Infoblox. Here you can see the name is infoblox.localdomain and the device type is a switch router. Once I hit save and close, then hit refresh, we see multiple extensible attributes were added including the ServiceNow table which tells me the device that was a switch router was added to the router table instead of the switch table. Also, the extensible attribute tells me what the system ID of the, of the discovered device is and the time it was added to ServiceNow. Now, going to the ServiceNow side, and here I'm going to the router table, then searching for the name of the device, we can see that it was added. Here we can see some of the useful information that was sent to ServiceNow from Infoblox. Now let's see how to set everything up. First, you want to go to community.infoblox.com and download the templates for the ServiceNow integration. Second, you want to set up the Infoblox grid for the integration. To do this, add some extensible attributes, then add the templates, add the endpoints, and add the notifications. Finally, you want to set up the ServiceNow side to view the information you want to see on the forms for the incidents and assets. Now I'll be showing you how to set everything up. First, you want to go to Administration, Extensible Attributes, and here you want to create eight extensible attributes. This includes ServiceNow Add Incident, ServiceNow Event ID, ServiceNow Last Incident Sent At, ServiceNow Location, ServiceNow Sys ID, ServiceNow Sync, ServiceNow Sync Dat, and ServiceNow Table. These are required for the ServiceNow integration to work properly. Next, you want to go to Grid, Ecosystem Templates, and here you want to add the two action templates and optional session management template for the ServiceNow integration. These can be found on the Infobox community website. 
These templates include the ServiceNow Assets, ServiceNow Security Events, and ServiceNow Management. Here, you can see that the templates are just a simple JSON file with some simple logic that you can manipulate to do different things through the instance variable. For the ServiceNow integration, you only have one instance variable, which is for the ServiceNow Security Event. This instance variable is called Severity, which can be set to a 1, a 2, or a 3. This instance variable lets you decide the severity of the incident when it is created on the ServiceNow side. Now back to the info box. We want to go to Grid, Ecosystem, Outbound Endpoint. Here you want to add an endpoint. Under the General tab, you want to add the URI of the ServiceNow you are sending events to, as well as the name and vendor for the endpoint. Also, you will need to add the username and password to the ServiceNow integration. Then, Add the Infobox grid username and password for the WAPI credentials. Next, you can add the validation. However, for demo purposes, I'm not going to use one. And here, I'm using the current grid master. However, for production, it is for best practice to use the grid master candidate. Next, end the session management tab. I have the log level set to debug for demo purposes. However, again, for production purposes and for best practices, it is best to set the log level to info or higher. Also, the template is not required, however it is recommended for the ServiceNow integration. Finally, for the extensible attributes, we don't have any. Next, you want to go to Notification and add a notification for the events. A notification is the way that we connect the template and endpoint to the grid using some simple rules. And here you can set what type of events or rules you want to have trigger the ecosystem template. Under the General tab, you want to create a name of the notification and select the name of the targeted endpoint that you are using. In this case, I'm using the ServiceNow endpoint I just showed. Then under the Rules tab, you can set the rules you want to have trigger the template. In this case, DNS telling events that have source IP that matches CIDR 10.0.0.0.8 will trigger the template. Under the Templates tab, you can decide which templates you want to have trigger when the event matches the rule occurs. Here, you'll see that once it is selected, the instance variable that are attached to the template are shown, and here's where you can actually edit the instance variable. Finally, I should show you one last thing. Under RBZ events, you have an additional tab called deduplication. Here you want to enable RBZ event deduplication to avoid triggering the template for the same event more than once. And here, you can choose to log all the dropped events. For demo purposes, however, I'm not going to be activating deduplication. Now I'll be showing you a couple of working examples and how you can make the integration work for you. So first, I'll be going to ServiceNow side, and here I'm going to the routers table, then searching the name of the device that has already been added. Here we can see all the interfaces with an IP and a comment on what the device is. We also see some other useful information. However, not everything you see here is everything you can see. If you right click on the name of the device on the top and then go to configure form layout, you can add and remove additional information. In order to see all options, refer to the ServiceNow deployment guide. Also, if there is not a field already present in the available options, you can create a new options by inserting the name and adding it. In this case, I'll show how to add a location since it's not present here. Simply add a name and string for the type and choose the max potential length of a location field. Then click Add and Save. Here ServiceNow updates, and when we return, we see that the location option is shown, however it is unknown. This is because we did not insert anything into the ServiceNow location extensible attribute on the InfoBlock side. So let's try adding a location. Here while adding a location, I'll also be showing you another way we can add devices to the ServiceNow side. Going to Data Management Devices, we can see all the devices that were discovered by InfoBlock. Here we can see that the device that we just created a host for is now managed. So now we want to create another host to manage another device and then add a location for that device. When creating the host, we want to go to Extensible Attributes and here we want to make sure that the ServiceNow Sync Extensible Attribute is set to true. And then we'll add a ServiceNow Location Extensible Attribute and add a value to the field. In this case, it will be the Tacoma Office. Here we see several different things, including the name of the device, the device type, the vendor name, and even the model. When we click on the device, we can see it has three different interfaces with IP. 
Now, on ServiceNow side, we'll look up the device name and see that it was added. By clicking on the device, we can see the three interfaces that the device had and the location that we inserted for the device. This time for asset management, I'll be showing you that networks can also be added to the ServiceNow database when they're created by the Infoblox screen. Simply adding a network, we can see that after hitting refresh, the extensible attributes are updated, allowing anyone to track which networks are added to the ServiceNow. Then on the ServiceNow side, I'll look up the networks, and here we can see the network I added on the Infoblox grid is also added to the ServiceNow database. Now let's see how security incidents are created. Here, I make a simple dig request to Infoblox grid with a domain that will be blocked. Here, we can see that NX domain was handed out by an Infoblox appliance with the information in the additional section of the return field. On Infoblox side, if we were to hit refresh, we can see that the extensible attributes were updated for the IP of the host who made the bad request. Here we can see that the incident number was updated. Then, on ServiceNow side, we can look up the incident number and see that the incident was created along with information on that incident. Finally, if you were to take away one thing from this video, it's that Infoblox and ServiceNow integration provides visibility into network changes and DNS threats, with active identification of network and security issues to provide quick and necessary responses. Well, thank you for watching. All documentation related to the Infoblox and ServiceNow integration can be found on the Infoblox community website. If you have any other concerns or questions, you can find me or any of the other Infoblox experts at the Infoblox community website. Thank you for your time and have a great rest of your day.